Hello all, my name is Krush Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to understand this very important topic, why deep learning is becoming so popular. Now, why I am taking up this particular question, guys, because many people usually ask me, Krish, right now, should we just focus on machine learning or should we focus on both machine learning and deep learning? And what will be my suggestion, guys, trust me, right now, you also need to learn deep learning because now com uh, companies, you know, has become so much competitive. This kind of jobs has become so much competitive. They'll try to see a person who is very, very good at both machine learning and deep learning. And it is not compulsory, guys. You Every problem statement needs to be solved by deep learning. It can also be solved by machine learning. So let's go ahead and try to understand why deep learning is becoming so popular. Now, in the recent trend, you can see, guys, from 2013 onwards, you know, 2013 from the Google trend, you can see uh, people searching about deep learning, probably doing a lot of research on deep learning has been increasing a lot, you know, from 2013 or 14. So what has led to this main, uh, you know, hike on the train trends, right? That is what we are going to understand. So let me just write it down. The first thing when I talk about trends, you know, when we talk about trends, the first thing is that probably people started using, um, there was, there was an exponential growth in data. Okay, there was an exponential growth in data. Now, why probably data was increasing, data was getting generated more and more because people started using smartphones, right? Social media platforms, which actually generates huge amount of data, right? Social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, you know, a lot of, uh, I, I myself have created my account on Facebook in somewhere around 2008, you know, and have been using till now but nowadays i don't use that much because uh, you know for obvious reasons i don't want to waste my time but yes many people actually spend their time you know social media platforms like facebook instagram youtube right youtube how many videos how many content is being getting generated now here what you see is that there's a correct exponential growth in the data like how the data is basically generated right there's exponential growth and definitely by with this specific data, we can do a whole lot of thing. You know, we can basically can solve different kind of use cases. Some of the use cases can be some of the amazing use cases can be like this recommendation system. So what you basically see in Netflix application recommendation system, probably face detection, right? Face detection. And many more use cases. I don't have to talk about various use cases, guys, because this is all possible because of data itself, right? And that is one of the main reason why, because exponential growth of data is basically getting generated. Uh, people are actually using so many platforms, smartphones, you know, they are every second, how many terabytes of jet, uh, in a day, how many terabytes of data is basically gener getting generated. This is one of the specific main specific reason why probably um, deep learning became pretty much famous. Not only this guys. Now, why this data can play a very important role. Now, this is a very amazing diagram. Probably this has been shared by Andrew NG also. Why deep learning? Just see, see this guys. This is pretty much amazing, right? So if I talk about deep learning, you know, and uh, if you see this specific graph here, you can see on the X axis, you have the amount of data that is increasing in the Y axis. You basically have the performance of the algorithms. Now, as you see that as the as the amount of data was actually increasing uh, with respect to the older learning algorithms, older learning algorithms may be any kind of machine learning algorithms that were previously there. Now, as the amount of data was increasing, you could see the performance after a specific point of time, you know, it, it started degrading down and it, it, it remained almost constant, you know. It did not increase, but in the case of deep learning, you see that as the amount of data is basically increasing, the performance is also becoming pretty much amazing. That basically means that this exponential growth of data, exponential growth of data, right? Le led us to create some amazing deep learning models. Okay, I'm sorry for my bad handwriting, but just understand this exponential growth of data led to create some amazing deep learning models in terms of accuracy in terms of various performance metrics let it be object detection in object detection we basically have iou in some any kind of problems we have accuracy so there 
the scientists could see that as the amount of data is basically increasing we are able to train our deep learning models in an amazing way and that is what this entire graph says as the amount of data is basically increasing you know this is basically my second point you could see that the performance of deep learning models were becoming amazing right it is becoming really really amazing and this is one one of the other reason because of the exponential growth of the data that happened we were able to train some amazing deep learning models now during this particular time usually we also know that guys for training deep learning models we usually require amazing hardware right so this is my third point because of technology because of the technology upgradation right we are able to get cheap amazing hardware right cheap hardware right the hardware cost has drastically reduced if i talk about hardware in this particular case gpu one of the best in business company nvidia right nvidia nvidia you you will be seeing how many different types of gpus they are coming up with you know and this gpus the price is reducing day by day you know a company can now set up data centers you know where they can train huge amount of data probably million of images millions of records just in no time right and this particular data centers if i consider in terms of a specific company usually the cost is less not only that guys now you have also clouds which provide you this specific gpu access directly in the cloud and they definitely they charge you and the charge is also very very less right you can directly use the gpu in the clouds and you can use some amazing gpus which are basically used in data centers right you see that i i in my workstation have nvidia titan rtx where i can probably train uh, a image classification uh, of 10000 images just in 20 to 25 minutes of some n number of epochs you know where at least you'll be able to get more than 85 percentage of accuracy now this was one of the other reason why probably deep learning became too much famous right it became so much popular right for researchers now even though they want to come with uh, come up with some research papers to do the practical part because of this amazing things because of the huge amount of data that they have because of this amazing technology upgradation cheap hardware you know they are able to do a whole lot of thing okay now this is probably my third reason why i would suggest that deep learning is pretty becoming pretty much popular now coming to the fourth reason guys this is also a very important reason now usually in machine learning suppose if i'm solving a ml project guys right in an ml project we take a problem statement and we probably do feature engineering or i can say we usually follow a life cycle of a data science project so suppose this is my data we follow the life cycle of a data science project in the life cycle of a data science project we have various steps like feature engineering feature selection you know so you probably will be knowing feature engineering feature selection and then you have model creation right and you have hyperparameter tuning and a lot of many steps what is this feature engineering and feature selection doing it is basically extracting features right feature extraction feature extraction and after we do the feature extraction then we probably uh build a model we we basically train our model okay and then finally we get a accuracy this is what is the usually steps that is taken for an ml project this feature extraction is a part of this particular life cycle right and here we are doing we are we are applying some different strategies to extract the features from the data it may be image data it may be tabular data it may be different different data but in the case of deep learning this feature extraction this probably this feature extraction and the training of the model right this see this model that we are training this is basically our machine learning models ml models but in the case of deep learning projects right these two steps these two steps are included within the within the deep learning technique suppose i have a data over here now we we can basically create a neural network which we can create a neural network which looks like this okay suppose this is my neural network which is interconnected like this right right this all are neural networks we have our neural networks this feature extraction and the machine learn or deep learning algorithm are combined inside this we don't have a separate process of doing feature extraction that is the main importance then in the entire deep learning project 
this particular step is included over here. So this and then finally we get our output. Output can be based on accuracy, right? So here the feature extraction and the machine learning algorithms, which we do it separately, right? In an ML project, this is entirely combined in a DL project. So here you will be having both, both feature extraction, feature, feature extraction plus, plus a classification or a regression problem. I'm just taking one example guys, classification or regression problem. It can be anything. This is probably one of the most important technique in deep learning. We combine both the feature extraction and the training problem statement together inside this particular neural network, right? And because of this coming to the fifth point, because of this, because of this, and this is a very important point, deep learning projects can really solve can really solve complex problem statement complex problem statement now what kind of problem statement yeah you know that nlp problem statement they are techniques the techniques uh, uh, of solving image classification object detection right these are some of the example image classification object detection nlp task chatbots this kind of problem statement this deep learning can just solve just like that it's just like a cup of tea for them it can really solve this complex problem statements, right? Why? Because it has huge amount of data. It has various techniques and all. And we usually use a deep neural network, deep neural network. As the neuro neural network becomes deep, more and more complex information, characters, extraction, uh, sorry, not char characters, feature extraction can be actually done within a problem statement. Now, this is the most important thing. And this probably will be my five points. The first point why deep learning is basically becoming popular because uh, somewhere around 2011, 12, exponential growth in the data was there because people started using smartphones, social media platforms. They started using uh, various, uh, uh, they started using techniques where more amount of data was actually getting generated, right? And because of this exponential growth of data in the second step, we started creating some amazing deep learning models because from this particular graph, we could see that in the older machine learning algorithms, as the amount of data was increasing after a sp some specific point, the performance was becoming constant and stagnant. And in the case of deep learning, the, as the amount of data was increasing, the performance was also improving. Why? Because of the deep neural networks. Okay. And then the third point that I would like to suggest is about technology upgradation, which is very much important. Now we have amazing cheap hardware, right? Like Nvidia GPUs, which will actually help us to train the models very much easily right then we in the case of we understood the fourth point the difference between an ml project and dl project in ml project we have separate pipeline for feature extraction and training of the machine learning model but in the deep learning projects we combine this feature extraction and training whether it be a classification or regression in just one pipeline itself right and the fifth point this deep learning can really really solve complex problems like this kind of things uh, which i have actually written over here Complex problems basically mean that it can solve NLP problems, uh, image classification, object classification, speech recognition, and many more. And that is all possible because of huge amount of data. So I hope you like this particular video and I hope I made you understand why deep learning is becoming so popular. And this can also be asked as an interview question. So I really wanted to make this specific video. So I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one doll. Bye-bye.